Hey everyone, this is Ian O'Byrne again. We're taking a look at WordPress and setting up a free website in WordPress.com. This video, I want to talk about tags and categories. This can be a, a challenging subject, um, and I know that people that regularly create content online, there's somewhat of a disagreement about tags and categories. There's you know different sides of of philosophies about how we deal with tags or categories. So. One thing to think about is when you get into your site, once again, we're in the free website, uh, we're in WordPress.com. When you develop a site in WordPress, and this is starting to fold over into other areas, but you will have an option to create posts and pages. And we had an earlier video looking at posts and pages and what are the differences between the two. The other thing to keep in mind is you have a decision to make about tags and categories. So if I start up a new blog post and I can call this sample post so I can call this sample post and I can you know I can write about whatever uh, I can write about peanut butter so I'll write about peanut butter and I'll have this incredible blog post about peanut butter one of the things that we'll have over here is we have another a number of options for the post feel free to scroll through and check out all of those but one of the really important ones is you're going to want to think about categories and tags categories and tags basically help readers make sense of and organize and sift through the content that you share through your website and the the challenge is that this organizational structure there's not a lot of agreement as to a right way or a wrong way to use categories and tags um, in discussions with a lot of people a lot of friends that make their own websites I've found that people get a little bit too tied to and a little bit uh, too fervent about how they organize their website um, I have the way that works for me and it and it makes sense I've tested a lot of different structures for categories and tags and I'll show you that um, but a category and a tag for the most part just helps you organize the content on your site and by content we're talking about posts we're talking about pages it's a way to sort of group content together to make it easier for others to see one of the best ways for me to uh, use categories and or tags is that you know if I regularly write about something let's say I'm in a class and I have 10 posts that I have for this one class I might give all of those posts a category I might put them into one category or add a tag a similar tag to all 10 so that if I want to share with the the instructor or I want to share with the student in the class my 10 posts in that group I can send them a link and it groups those all together um, and so a, a, a category is a uh, we generally use them to define general topics on our blog tags are some are used to drill down a bit further into your content so tags can be more specific another thing that I use and, and then it works for me on my site is I have very few categories um, and I and I view I, I only add one category per post or page whereas tags I can be much more specific and I can talk about content on that page so I will add multiple tags for a post or a page so I, I would only put a post or a page in one category but then I will add multiple tags depending on what I wrote about so for example in this tag here I might say okay this is that you know this is all about peanut butter so I now can have a peanut butter tag and then anytime I ever talk about peanut butter on my website if I add that to peanut butter tag then people can look across and they can see all of the stuff that I've written about peanut butter let's say I also write about sandwiches maybe I can spell sandwiches correctly so I can write I like peanut butter I can write about peanut butter you know I love sandwiches hopefully your websites are much more uh, erudite than what I'm writing here so I can have a tag about peanut butter I can have a tag about sandwiches but then if we talk about categories categories once again are general topics on my website so I might have a, a a general category this right now they start you off with uncategorized so I might you know write something along the lines of like deep thoughts So now what I can do is I can put this into 
not my uncategorized uh, category. I'm going to add it to deep thoughts. So this deep thoughts might be just general random posts that I have about any area. But let's say I wanted to have posts, uh, a category about a specific class or instruction. So I might have a category about uh, pedagogy. So obviously my post about peanut butter and sandwiches probably does not belong in the pedagogy category. So this would just be my deep thoughts, random posts about, you know, any topic area. So if I hit publish, it's going to take this post. It's going to right now I have no content, no other images or audio or video there. It's publishing this right now. And I can go look at my post on my website. I can see the pieces that I have there. Um, and this theme that I have set up doesn't really list the tags or the categories. So another thing that makes me uh, another thing that um, changes my thinking about tags and categories is the theme because some themes they will front uh, they will put front and center the tag and or category that this post lives within. Um, and so for some themes, you really want to be thoughtful about the tags and or categories that you use. So let's look at my website. So if I go into my site, I can click down. Um, I can look at all my posts. Okay, and we looked at this previously. I have a little over 400 posts. But what I can also do is I can look in at an individual post. So here's the title of a post that I have. And you can see that I have three main categories that I use. I don't use the uncategory, uncategorized at all. Uh, I'm very specific, but my three main categories that I have set up, I have teach, make, and reflect. So teaching is generally posts that I have where I, I'm sharing information with colleagues, with students, uh, you know, I'm putting materials together. So this is a post all about how to plan, you know, and, and develop internet inquiry units. So this is primarily for my students, for colleagues, for students in other, in, in some of my friends' classrooms. It's generally a, a, a pedagogy post. It's all about teaching and learning. If I create something, you know, if I have a post about a you know, stop motion movie that my son and I have created, or if I go do uh, a webinar and we talk about LED makes. So if I create something that goes into my make category. Um, and one of the reasons why I use make is because I want to use it as a way to have me regularly think about some of the content that I create and share online. The last category that I really have is reflect. And that's a way for me to think about work that I've done in the past and sort of debrief and decompress and and you know reflect upon what I've done so this is also a way for me to think about my role as a teacher at, you know and a learner and in one of the things that I always expect from my students is I want them to be a healthy reflective practitioner I want them to think deeply about their role as an educator and so the reflection side of things that's one of the pieces that I built into my site and it starts, it helps me think about, you know, my own practice and, and my work. Um, so I have three categories, teach, make and reflect. I have to admit that I don't really like these categories. If I had my druthers, I would have just one category that was called posts. And it was the one category that I gave to all content um, because I don't really use the categories that often. If you look at the front of my website, if you go into the blog area, the categories are not front and center. Uh, in a previous theme that I used, as soon as you'd click into the blog area, you'd see the categories listed right there. Um, some WordPress themes have the categories listed front and center. Um, and so you want to be thoughtful about what you use. This does not. Um, so if I click on a post, and I don't even think this lists, I haven't looked at this in a while. So you can see as I look through here, they will have the, the category listed there. Um, and so I, for the most part, will still keep the teach, you know, reflect and make uh, categories because I think it would look silly if I came to a post and this said post. Um, so I'll keep it very simple. I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, the other thing that I've noticed recently is 
the this thing this theme was just updated so you can see down here I had the tags and you can see that I don't know how to spell inquiry but I had the tags listed down here so if I want to I can click on internet inquiry and I can go see the other tags the other posts with that tag on it so if I look at this post again I have over here the categories I keep it simple on my website I have three um, I would really prefer one maybe two um, but it depends on how you organize your site once again I, I generally keep one category per post I know there's people that flip-flop it uh, and they include multiples what I do is I let me redo this while I'm here what I do is I basically add multiple tags per post so in this post here I talk a lot of uh, I talk about a lot of different things so in this post I talk about online collaborative inquiry I talk about reading comprehension content construction project-based learning so what I want to do is I want to add all of those tags so if you are reading across my site and you want to say okay what is let me look at all of the posts that he has about online reading comprehension you can go in and click that tag and see everything okay so if I update so I can fix my spelling error there it's going to add all of those tags so this one post will have the category the one category but then it has multiple tags across the whole space and one of the reasons why that is important for me is like I said if I go in and I look at this one post if I want to share with somebody all of the work that we've had all about online content construction they can click on that link and they can go through and see all of the stuff that I have there so they can click on that online content construction link and they can see all of the different pieces that I have listed in there so they can see videos that I have other work that I've done um, another uh, reason why this is important for me is in an area like digital badges I've done a lot of work in digital badges I've written a lot about digital badges it's very easy for me to say this to a colleague hey you're getting started in digital badges or whatever the subject matter might be here is a link give them a link to the tag for digital badges and they can easily scroll through and see all of the different posts I have in an area and they can follow that thread across my site so once again we're taking a look at wordpress.com we're taking a look at the use of let me get back to my dashboard we're taking a look at uh, tags and categories and how to organize them for me I keep it simple I like to have uh, you know uh, very few categories but use a lot of tags there's different people that view uh, the use of tags and categories different ways but the main thing that you want to think about is tags and categories are a way for you to organize the content on your site to make it easier for others to get in and manipulate or organize it and so my uh, my advice is to get started and you know continue to post content to your blog but then add tags and categories to see what works best for you so hopefully that helps out and I'm interested to see how you use tags and categories and if you have a different structure by all means pull together a video like this or put together a blog post about it and tell me what you do with tags and categories so that I can learn and possibly maybe I'm doing it all wrong and I wanted to take a look at it a better way so thanks a lot and let me know if this helps you at all